Welcome to another episode of the Keep Making Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have Jared Pallone of Jared's Works. Uh, he's an affiliate of ours from uh, of Illumilites. And Jared, super excited to have you on the podcast. Thanks for doing this, man. Appreciate you having me. I really do. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped about it. So I remember the first time I saw one of your Star Wars cubes. Um, and I was floored because I had just seen you like start an Instagram not too long ago like it was the the just the time between seeing your star wars thing and the, your, your instagram just starting to me wasn't very long obviously i'm like on the outside i don't know how long it took for you to like get noticed that kind of thing but the reality is you came in like a freight train because there's been guys that have been doing this for a while but you clearly are making a mark uh in this arena especially with the star wars resin wood hybrids so Let's take everybody to the beginning. How'd you get started in this? Um, where are you exactly? Like what, you got a really cool sign behind you. You've got a cool lathe. Let's give everybody the context of who you are and how this all started. All right, so my backstory is uh, I've always tinkered. I've always had hobbies, uh, probably too many hobbies. Um, in 2017, uh, Hurricane Maria came, uh, came through the Keys and my in-laws have a second home down there. And um, the home sustained a lot of damage and the bottom level got flooded and the um, it was just a, a vacation home and one of their friends down there who is a deputy lost everything and they made a deal with him that he could stay at the house and in exchange uh, he would uh, he would provide the labor to do uh, the, the repairs to the house well he left behind temporarily this big piece a big clear piece i mean it was like this big this big and it had dolphins suspended in it, like they were, they, they were swimming in water, and it was just crystal clear. And I was just floored with what it was. I didn't know what it was made of. And I started just looking up, you know, Googling what it was. I started finding YouTube channels on how to make it. Um, and I, I subscribed to all these channels, a lot of your affiliates, um, Jake Thompson, Zach Higgins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I watch uh, Nick Zametti, Ben's Works, which uh, you can kind of see it's where I got my name play off of a little bit. Nice, uh, nice. Awesome. He's, he's, in, he's on the other side of the, of the world, uh, but he's awesome. Um, and I started just watching all these videos. And before I decided to buy anything or jump into it, I, I really did a lot of research. Uh, I looked at a lot of different brands of resin, uh, what they all did. I really did my homework. So I didn't want to start into it and just be a complete failure. But I started small um, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I started just buying little tiny molds. Everybody does. They buy these little molds off of, off of Etsy, off of Amazon. And I started mm -hmm. making little things and I... I figured out what a pressure pot was. And fortunately with me, because I tinker, um, I have in my garage, which is where I work out of, I have a 60 gallon two stage air compressor and a full array of tools. Like where I'm at right now is my, my workbench, which is a six foot long automotive mm -hmm. toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, and I just started tinkering and making things out of, in molds. And it just started getting cooler and cooler. And then I bought a really cheap lathe off of Amazon and I started looking at what I could do with that. And I've just, I've evolved myself. And as I've evolved, my techniques have gotten more advanced. I've bought more equipment to accommodate those techniques. Um, and where everything really took off was in the summer of last year where nobody had done it yet. And I, I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan, a complete Star Wars fan. I said, man, I bet you'd be cool if I could take two pieces of wood and have the Millennium Falcon fly between it like a, like a canyon. Yep, I know which piece you're talking about. I think this, I, we probably have shared it on our page and everything. Oh like my that. God. Yeah, th th that, was that the rocket ship for you? Was that, that the thing? Was the that the rocket ship. I had no idea what I had done at that point. <laughs> um, uh, oh my God. It, it's, I started, you know, I just thought it was really cool because I like it. I made what I like. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just super cool. And I, you know, anytime I made anything, I shared it on pages. I shared it on Facebook pages. That's where I started out with Facebook. I shared it on Facebook pages for specific groups. Just say, hey, this is really cool. Look what I made. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I got one behind me that will never go to another home because it was a failure piece, which we'll sh I'll show you later. But it's kind of like this. Just a little oh, awesome. three half inch square, two inches thick. Um, and I just thought it was really cool. So mm -hmm. um, next thing you know, people are like, oh, how, you know, where can I buy that? And you know, I didn't think of something as I could make money off of. Um, and, you know, I really don't make much off of it. But I thought, you know, hey, somebody wants to buy it and, and we can take it from there. That's cool. Then right. people started sending me uh, sending me random pieces to, to make for them. And somebody at once, like the third piece that somebody was commissioning, it wasn't a Star Wars theme. Uh, he sent me a military coin, one of those challenge coins. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, the yeah. The whole story behind that was um, 
him and his uh, buddy are in the Coast Guard and they got a very unique challenge coin and they cut it in half. He kept one half, his friend kept the other half. He sent wow. his half to, to embed it in a wood and resin hybrid square. Um, and at that point, when I was in the middle of working on it, I kept asking the guy, you know, what are you, what, you, what is your opinion? What do you want with this? And he just said, listen, you're the artist, you do it, it's, it's your call. At that point, it's where the, the, the switch got flipped. And I said, wow, somebody just called me an artist. And I kind of took a step back and looked at what I was doing. And I said, wow, am I really an artist? I don't think I'm an artist, but am I? And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started having that, that mindset of what I'm making is a, a beautiful artistic keepsake. And I've, I've taken that to heart. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've had people send me very near and dear pieces uh, that are irreplaceable, that I've, uh, I've made memorial pieces for loved ones that have passed. Um, and uh, it's really, uh, it's, it's made me feel like, uh, like I'm more important than just some guy that's, you know, taking a piece of wood and throwing a Star Wars ship and throwing some resin on it and polishing it up. You know, it's, you know, you, you become part of somebody when you mm -hmm. do that. Um, I'll give you just a, just a sidetrack a little bit. A lady oh, is, I love these stories. These are beautiful stories. I, I'm like, this is gold. Please keep and sharing is, these stories. This is one I'm going to, I'm going to try not to cry because it's, it's kind of emotional. This lady named Tanya, her husband passed away in 2008 and he was an organ donor. And it was a sudden death. His eyes were donated to two people and gave sight to two different people. Wow. So for that donation, she received a commemorative coin for the gift of sight. She trusted me to take that coin and make something out of it. So I made a four inch cube. I took a really cool looking burl wood base, a lot of canyons and nooks and crannies. And I suspended it at a 45 degree angle and in the nooks and crannies, I just as my idea is flowing. I asked her what her favorite color was, what his favorite color was. His favorite color was gray. Her favorite color was blue. I painted the inside little nooks and crannies of the burl uh, gray, and then I brushed on amazing clear cast, and I used some blue mica powders to give it a tinge. So it was like their colors embedded together. And um, I had a little plaque made with his with his name and his and his when he was born and passed away, and. Um, she cried a lot when she received that piece. Man. Uh, and it's, it's, I got pretty emotional when I was finished with it because it just, it came out just amazing. And, um, you know, that's, that's the, that's what I, where I knew I was at that, that level of, you know, of, of trust and accomplishment. And um, that, those are the things that keep me going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, man. I really appreciate you sharing that story with us. I mean, the reality is like, that's, you're being, you said it yourself, you're being entrusted with things that mean a lot to people. And I, I do, I would say you, you should definitely uh, embrace that idea that you, you are an artist. I think a lot of people over time, because they have career choice or high school or whatever, like they get locked into like, no, I'm not an artist. I'm not really making things or I can't do that because I don't do very specific artistic type endeavors. But like you're making stuff every single day that has an impact on people pretty sure that's what artists are meant to do <laughs> like um so it, that's really awesome that that has been happening so that that sound last summer it sounds like when things started to really take off and have things just continue to escalate are you having to like squeeze in time or like uh dip out of work because you got another thing you got to take care of or what's go how what's the current state of affairs for you in regards to the resin artistic work that you have so i am um... In my, my trade, my day trade, uh, I am in the automotive world. Um, I, um, I work at a new car dealership in the service department and I work a very, a lot of days, a lot of hours, it's a stressful job. And um, what I do is my resident woodwork is um, an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, so I balance, I, I keep work at work, I keep my artwork at home. I don't intermix the two. Um, cool. I don't wanna get myself in any trouble with my employer. <laughs> <laughs> I do like my job, you know, I show up and they pay me. Um, but, uh, you know, I mix my time, uh, you know, I, I keep them, keep them completely separate. Um, good, good. And, Sounds like you've been able to find balance. That's really at the end of the day, what I think was go where I was going is like, some people have perceptions when they see people online, like yourself, that like, this is all you do. But the reality is like, this is just something you're doing on the weekends or at nights or whatever. Yeah, that's I do it weekends and nights. Um, 
and I try to, I, I have to balance my, my time with my better half as well as my time with my, like she calls it crafting. Um, when I get home, are you crafting tonight? And that's, that's the conversation we have almost every day, but I, I try to minimize, I plan what I do. Um, I don't want to go out in the garage every night and spend four hours working on pieces, even though I'd love to, because I love it so much. Um, but the reality is I've got to balance time between my artwork, my, my day job and with my family. Um, you know, if I get really, really backed up on my, on my commissions, you know, I will spend a little more time than I, than I should out in the garage, getting some work done. Um, actually, um, I quit my job in May, uh, at the other dealer I worked at, I quit in May and for almost three months, I actually did my artwork full time. I, I wasn't sure. If oh, I was wow. Um, and I was very successful with all of my work. I was at a constant backlog and, um, I'm going to sidetrack again, but I quit my job May 19th. It was amazing. I actually got up and walked out. It was, it was an amazing experience to do. <laughs> um, I had a piece of a pair of cubes. I was working on the Star Wars theme, of course, for this lady in Hawaii. And uh, it was like this perfect timing of, of a, another social media blow up for me. Um, these pieces I finished at the end of May were shared on a Facebook page called Star Wars Always, which at this point now has over a million followers. And oh, wow. it was shared on there. I could have spent all day for three weeks answering messages. Mm -hmm. And that was like, it was like perfect timing. And that, that was the fuel that kept me going for, for almost three months doing it full time. Um, but, you know, in reality, um, I work out of my garage. It's a two car garage and I've got a motorcycle and a, garage, a car in here. And um, I, I need, if I was going to do it full time, I need to have dedicated workspace uh, if I'm going to do, do something mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I just determined it wasn't the right time in my life. So I went back to work and uh, I'm, I'm still very, very busy with my, my work now. Anybody that orders something from me, uh, it's, I tell them I'm, I'm two to three months behind at any given moment. And that's true. I, I'm always very, very busy. Wow. Two to three months. That is a lot of commissions. It is. I'm, right now, I think I got about 25 outstanding orders. Holy cow, man. Does this, this one, congratulations. Two, that's very impressive. Um, three, sounds like you could be working all day and all night for quite some time if you really wanted to, but I'm glad that you're finding some balance for yourself. <laughs> so um, can you tell, show us some pieces, some of like your favorite pieces that you've made and maybe some that are like mid process or I, I, do you have any fails that you'd be willing to share oh, with the audience too? What do you think is behind me right now? I've got, I call it my wall of shame. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. And I've got some earlier pieces that are, that didn't come out so good. And I've got some very, very recent pieces that came out really, really bad. So I'll, I'll be happy to show all of them to you. So um, absolutely, let's see it. So let's start with, uh, we're going to start with, how about some good finished pieces? I like that. Let's start with the good ones. That's I've great. I've got ones that are, that are done that I haven't shipped out yet because uh, like one, one customer, actually both of them have multiple pieces and only one are done. So um, this one I recently posted on my Instagram, little R2D2. Man, in look at that thing. And this is, it might be hard to see on the camera, but it is absolutely positively crystal clear. Wow. This is This is clear slow. I did a little um, brush on, on the amazing clear cast on the bottom, make it kind of like look like ocean yep. waves. But it came out really, really cool, and you can see the, Man, the color. That is that. stunning. You did That's so good with that one. And I've got, let's see, where's the other one at? Oh, <laughs> right here. <laughs> I mean, the Incredible Hulk. I don't do just Star Wars. <laughs> so the Incredible Hulk here, kind of like in a little uh, little cave with some rocks. Look at that. Polished job there. And this one, this is a beautiful piece of quilted maple. Uh, it just came out. This is a, It's an amazing piece of wood. So are you stabilizing all your wood when you're doing this, or are you That's just doing like a seal coat? <laughs> Oh no, I am absolutely stabilizing every every little piece of wood. Um, I, I'm in South Florida, and our humidity is just oh off the course. yeah. You, so I you have to, to. even if even if I I put it in the oven and then you know cast it the second it, it's cold, uh, it, it doesn't work. I <laughs> I have mm -hmm. to I have to stabilize, and I also brush on a seal coat of amazing clear cast, and I let that cure for at least 48 hours before I do the main pour of clear slow. Because I've discovered that clear slow, is, uh, which I use primarily, is very moisture sensitive. And, uh, yeah, extremely. <laughs> yes. So, and I'm in like the worst possible environment to use it because it's South Florida and the humidity is beyond ridiculous. So, um, I always, I always have my, I use my phone as a stopwatch. So the moment I mix part A and part B, uh, the the clock is on. My goal is I mix it and I want to have it in the pressure pot and under pressure 
in under two minutes. Um, oh, wow. Clear slow doesn't take very long to mix. Um, you know, you can tell when it's done. You know, you, you look for the little squigglies from the end when you're, when you're wiping the sides of the cup. Uh, you can mix it really quick and you can look in and see if there's anything still, uh, you know, any of the like little floaters, I guess you kind of call it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it tells you when it's done mixing. Um, actually, that was a tip that I got from Zach Higgins from his YouTube channel, one of your fellow makers. Yeah, um, Zach's awesome. And, uh, you know, I just, oh, goodness. Um, where, where, what were we talking about now? I lost my... Lost Sorry, my I, I, I totally got you sidetracked. You, it definitely makes sense that you have to stabilize. You showed us two pieces that you're really proud yeah, of. So we're mid, yeah, um, and then uh, you're in South Florida, so you have to, the moisture is really sensitive. But uh, okay. I, I, the reason why I ask is so many people ask us those questions literally every day um and, and so many people think that you don't have to stabilize or you don't have to do a seal coat or you don't have to prep your wood and we're like it literally you're going to waste so much money if you do not do those steps um yeah, and it can't be said enough so it's very important so i'll show you i'll show you a few more pieces here um we can talk about failures and i'll go into uh, i'll show some pieces that are actually in process right now okay so i made a piece that went to singapore um, it was, he wanted a very specific looking, he wanted it to be the Millennium Falcon being chased by Darth Vader's TIE fighter, uh, two very okay. different ships. And he wanted it flying over like a little space, uh, spacey planet Canyon with some water in it. And I made one and it looked great. Um, when, before I poured the resin. So and it doesn't look too bad. If you look a little closer, um, I got a nice little air crack right here. Oh, yep. Right, yep. right above yep. the Falcon. And there's a million bubbles in here, which I have no idea how this happened. Um, it was a, I'm just going to call it a freak accident. But I ended up making one absolutely identical to this. And uh, it came out even more awesome. So now that's in my wall of shame. I have, <laughs> uh, I have many more, um, but I'll just show you. Uh, I'll show you just two more. BB-8. Everybody knows yep. BB-8? Yeah. yeah. Well, look a little closer at his head. It's not, the, not really symmetrical. Oh no! What happened? His head, is, his head is hollow, and it caved in when it was curing. Oh no! <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the heat kind of squished it. I'm going to show you one that um, I actually poured it on Sunday, and I'm still pretty upset about it. It's a piece that I planned for months, and uh, it's as uh, now it's a. Now if I could give you a hug or give you a pat on the back, I would right oh, now. You're gonna, just you're, for... gonna, you're gonna see what happened. This is six quarts, a gallon and a half of clear slow that I poured in three pours. Oh, no. <laughs> it weighs probably uh, easily 12, 13 pounds. Wow. Oh, no. There's a heat. Oh, it's warped right there in the center. Yeah, yeah you see that? That was a. Uh, I'm going to cut it apart on my bandsaw. Uh -huh. um, I'm pretty sure that there was some air inside the Mandalorian's head that got out. <sighs> And, and which, it doesn't make sense because I've cast, I've casted these figures quite a few times without any single problem. And of course, the piece that has probably $300 of materials in it is now complete junk. <laughs> oh, man. But, I'm so yeah, sorry. I'm, I appreciate you showing those because people need to understand, like, even the people that are really good at it, there's still chance for error because oh. error is, is, plays a big role. Yeah, uh, very hard, very, very hard. So um, I'll show you. I got a couple pieces in various stages. You know, my uh, my specialty is I make a five inch cube that has the Death Star and the Millennium Falcon in it, um, and I've made a lot of them. So I, I'll show you that I got uh, a couple things in process here. So this is, and this is one of my secrets. This is a piece of stabilized maple burl. Um, I brush on a coat of Amazing Clear Cast to seal it. And then my ships, and this is one of the problems if you don't do this, and you know, if you don't, you're begging for trouble. These ships have hollow pockets inside. I actually take the ships apart. I fill the pockets up with resin. Sometimes I'll use UV resin or five minute epoxy. Sometimes I'll pour in amazing clear casts. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've used clear slow depending on my time, time frame to get them done. Mm -hmm. um, and then I prop them on these little clear rods. It might be a little hard to see, but yep. these little clear rods are made of, of uh, clear slow and I mold them in a straw. And if you don't use the right straw, they're not gonna be glossy. And if they're not glossy, they're gonna show up when you're casting. And Look at those great pointers. My Death Star, this is another one. This is actually, uh, there's not a lot of these left. It's, <laughs> I buy them on eBay. This is the Micro Machines Death Star 2. That's, oh, uh, yeah. that uh, it's, they only made them in the 90s. They don't make them anymore. So I buy them whenever I can, but to 
make these work. They're filled with a dense foam inside. I actually cut them open on the bottom <laughs> and I, and I, I uh, soak in some, uh, some thick super glue and then uh -huh. I fill them up, fill them up with, uh, with amazing clear cast and I have it all tinted black. And that's why I, and I just grind it down and kind of blends them a little bit. Wow. So at least a lot of work goes into making these. Yeah, so, no joke. This is one in the middle of the process in a mold right now. It's all set. The background is um, it's amazing clear cast, which I got some some mica powders in it uh, and some uh, just some color shifting powders just gently uh, mixed into it just to give it a little color shifting effect. This I'm going to pour the um, I'm going to pour the clear for this. Uh, I think it might be tonight. I wait two days. I think. Yeah, I can pour this tonight. Um, and that's one thing I love about cl using clear slow is the demold time. I mean, I leave it in my pressure pot for four straight hours. I can take it right out, take it right out of the mold. And, you know, I, um, I don't know if you saw my, uh, my Instagram message, but I have I'm actually going to be planning on doing a YouTube video, um, very soon where I cut the wood, I stabilize it, I coat it and I cast it and I finish it on the lathe in the same day. So Holy cow. I am going to do that. And. The, uh, the only way I'm going to be able to do it in my environment is by using five minute epoxy to brush it on uh, mm -hmm. on the wood uh, before mm -hmm. I set the, set the figure in it. But I'm going to do it and it's going to happen in a couple of weeks and I'm, I'm really excited to get that started. So oh, man, I can't wait to see those results. I can't wait to see that video. I mean, that's that's really <laughs> exciting. I mean, the I don't think people understand. Like I tell I I do these podcasts and I do these interviews quite often and I tell people like I watch all the videos that people post. And they don't believe me. I'm like, no, no. Like, I genuinely watch all this stuff because, like, I, I find it so fun and so fascinating to see the act of making uh, in real time. And, like, I'm really excited to see that video. I think that'd be really cool to see from front to back. My, I only got to see that process uh, really in person one time so far, and that was with Scott Wishart um, of Scott's Mini Woodshop, who's obviously he's done the X-Wings like crazy, and he does the, the globes. Um, him, but him, like and that, I, uh, him and I chat very often on Instagram he's he's a good dude he's a really good guy um but like he he showed us his process in person we went out there last year around this time I when the him. last movie came out so yeah it was a, a really eye-opening experience and like that's on like for me i'm like oh please take a video of that because i would love to see how you do it because everybody has their very nuanced but different ways of getting things done um because everybody finds their own way um which is really cool yeah. I was trying to put in a little Star Wars pun there, like with the Mandalorian, but I don't think I landed that well. Um, <laughs> but no, so what are what are some pointers for people that are interested in casting resin or working with epoxy? Or what are the things that you would tell them if they wanted to do something similar or just in general, they have an idea in their head and they think that resin and wood is going to be the, the pathway for them? So everything I see online, everybody asks, you know, how do you get it so clear? How, you know, how do you get the bubbles out? And the clear answer is going to be, you got two ways of doing it. You're going to either use a deep pour epoxy, which works great, uh, but has limitations, or you can use a casting resin and you have to use a pressure pot. Um, no matter which way you look at it, a pressure pot's going to always be your best option. Um, and Jake Thompson, one of your other uh, affiliates, Mm -hmm. He did a great video a couple years ago about taking the, uh, the Harbor Freight, uh, which I'll show you, the Harbor Freight paint tank. And mm -hmm. there's mine right there. Um, and awesome. I, convert, I converted mine over for casting by using Jake's video. And that's what, that's what I used to start out with. Um, and since then, I bought a, um, I bought a uh, California Air Tools five gallon. And I, they were both, they both had pieces in them last night. I used them both simultaneously. And I actually just ordered another five gallon pressure pipe. Um, just for to speed things up. Mm -hmm. um, but the bubbles, a pressure pot is an absolute must. If you, if you really want to guarantee you get a clear casting and that's, that seems to be the struggle that everybody has. Um, you know, you, the new amazing deep pour that you guys have is a fantastic product. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, myself, I don't have the patience for the curing time. <laughs> so, right. you know, right. clear flow is always, it's always going to win hands down. Um, but uh, I've, uh, I did a piece, uh, which unfortunately I don't have it here now. Uh, but I put on my Instagram, I actually did a six inch wide and 10 inch tall cylinder with amazing deep port and it had a Boba Fett figure in it. And uh, I, I do did, remember saying that. Yeah, I just I just finished it last weekend. Um, and that was amazing deep port. And, um, you know, uh, the one thing I, uh, I, I, I tell people is if you're going to use the deep port, you have to plan, you know, uh -huh. and it's great. You know, you can let it cure naturally and it'll, it'll, it'll degas itself. Um, 
I always give myself an extra sense of uh, uh, an extra bit of insurance by using my pressure pot after it's uh, after it's all uh, purged out. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, you want to plan. You know, don't jump in it. You want to plan your pieces. Don't just pour your resin and hope for the best. You know, you want to do your research, um, and um, you know, you don't have to jump in with both feet, but do it right. You're going to have failures no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just had one a couple of days ago. <laughs> um, right, but, heartbreaking one. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you want to you want to plan everything that you do. Um, you know, you want to protect yourself. I have a mask. I wear gloves. Um, you know, this stuff that you're still dealing with chemicals. You want to protect yourself, uh, protect mm -hmm. your environment, your home, your family. Um, but plan. That's the biggest thing. Plan. Don't fly into it blind. Yep, I couldn't agree more. It's some very good advice. Now, who? Who would you like to give a shout out to that has kind of helped you get to your, your point of progress? It sounds like you definitely want, did your, like you recommend to other people, do your research. Who are the people for you were like the big unlocks? You mentioned some names earlier, but I want to make sure that they, like they know if they were to watch this video that you're thinking of them at this moment. So the first one I came across was Jake Thompson. Um, and, uh, you know, Jake and I are buddies now and uh, we, we chat a lot online. Um, Zach Higgins, um, another really big influence. I've, I've watched every single video that uh, Zach and Jake have put out. Uh, and where I got my name inspiration from, Ben's Works, uh, mm -hmm. who's out in, down in Australia. Um, you know, those were the, the, the big three, I would, I would say, that mm -hmm. had been most, uh, the most influence on how I've done things. And I've, I've really, like I said, I did a lot of research and I watched a lot of videos before I even decided to pour my first drop of resin. Mm -hmm. that that's so great also all three of those people are they're all really kind and generous people and very open to sharing their process and educating whoever comes their way which is like i mean that's it's really what we're about at the end of the day when it comes to lumalite is like how can we help people make what they want to make yeah. and we try and find people out in the world that have that same philosophy because yeah, everybody might have their own secret process when it comes to like their colors. They are very like, they figured out a specific way of getting certain colors on something, which we're like, cool, keep that to yourself. But like everyone, the process in general is really easily shareable and it's better because more people come into the playing field really at the end of the day and everyone grows from that. Um, everyone learns more. And then there's like a healthy competition uh, and not like, like, oh, they did... They did a Star Wars thing. Star Wars is literally a global phenomenon. You're not the, you know, like, you know what I mean? So it's really cool that um, those people helped you. And I'm sure people have started to reach out to you too about this too. Yeah, I get, I actually, um, on average, I get about two to three messages a day, um, typically on Facebook, because I have, I have 10,000 likes on there and like 11,000 followers on there. So it's like 21,000 people that pay attention to me on there. <coughs> I get a lot of people that message me on there and ask me for advice. Um, and I, I will always take the time to answer questions and give them tips. Uh, most of the questions that I get is either bubbles or polishing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, of course, I, you know, I get the, you know, what resin do you use? Even though if I'll post something and I'll say, this is a Lumalite Clear Slow, the, the next question will be, what resin do you use? <laughs> <laughs> yep. like, the, like the husband standing in front of the pantry saying, uh, honey, where's the peanut butter? It's right in right. front of you. That's, right. that's what happens. Yeah. Um, but I'm always, I always give the advice. I'm, I'm never going to hold back from somebody. Um, you know, I have my ways and my techniques of doing things and, uh, I don't have any secrets. Uh, I just, like, I just showed you how I, uh, how I do my clear posts. Um, I want them to be completely invisible. Mm -hmm. Done a pretty good job at that. You have, <laughs> but it's no secret. You know, anybody asks me how I do it, I'm more than happy to tell them. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I have my style of doing things. Um, you know, there are other makers out there that do, pieces like in the themes that I have, uh, they have their own styles of doing things. Um, I've, I've tried to one up myself with every piece that I've done. Um, I recently did a piece, um, it was pretty big. It was seven inches by seven inches and four inches deep. And it was a uh, Mandalorian scene that uh, one of the second episode of the new season where the Razor Crest was being, was being chased by two X-Wings on a icy planet. And oh yeah, I, I luckily have seen that, that episode because I was like, if he spoils this for me, I haven't seen the whole season yet, but did, I'm did so glad that, that? I saw the second episode, so yeah. You saw that piece that I made that had that? Yeah, I, I haven't seen the piece, but I know what, what scene you're talking about from the show, which is, it's a really cool scene. You have to go look on my, on my Instagram or my TikTok. I put it on TikTok, and I love TikTok. Um, it's got like 220,000 views on TikTok. What? It's gone absolutely bonkers. 
on TikTok, but it's I made like the water feature. It looks like realistic icy water. Oh no, I definitely saw this. This is incredible. It, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's like oh, a diorama. Man. That this was uh, beautiful. I did that in two pours with clear slow, and uh, you know after I I bothered and early on I bothered Carol a lot over there. <laughs> um, Carol's incredible. But I actually just on my own. Uh, this is a tip for you guys at Pour Illuminate Clear Slow. Uh, I figured out the perfect time between pours to avoid the witness line. The witness line is the layer, the the mm -hmm. visible layer line that would be between your two pours. Um, mm -hmm. I try to only do one pour, but if a big piece like that was just so big, I had to split it in two. Mm -hmm. uh, that I I start mixing from the time I mix part A and part B, I start the stopwatch. At 25 minutes from that time, I start mixing part A and part B for the next pour. And then I, um, really? when I'm about 30 seconds in on mixing it, I will start letting the air out of the pressure pot. And I, I want to have the the next, next batch of resin poured and back under pressure by 28 minutes. And there will be zero witness line. Really? And th th that doesn't cause any exotherm cracking? It, that's no. been long enough for the first one to set you up and it's need good to let, to... You, you need to let the air out slow. I don't let it just burst mm -hmm. out. I let it out slow. Um, takes about a minute for it to fully release all the air at the rate that I let it out. Um, and there is no line at all between the layers. Um, I'll give you guys you, heard I'll it here you. from Jared's works. He, he know, he's got the secret sauce of how to do a couple one, layers. I actually got one right here. This was a, uh, another one of my failures I didn't get to show you yet. Um, and the only reason it's a failure, and it's, it's, two, um, it's two, uh, two pours because I suspended the ship, uh, except I was an idiot. And when I poured the first, uh, the first layer, uh, the resin uh, hit the, uh, the wing and it mm -hmm. dripped. And it dripped on the top of the, the first layer. And there's a, you can actually see, there you go. Oh, that, yeah. That's the, that dripped on the top of the semi-cured first pour of clear slow, but yeah. there's no witness line. There's no witness line in this. Unfortunately, right. I have to remake this piece. <laughs> as cool Man. as it is, it's I so have to cool. remake it. Man. Well, Jared, this has been incredible. One, I really appreciate you sharing these uh, these tricks because these are things that even we're, we're still learning things that though it's possible. The funny thing is about like releasing a product like this is we're not entirely sure what everyone is going to end up doing, like what they're going to create with this product. And we're blown away literally on a day to day to day basis of like what people send us and like, Hey, I'm trying to do X, Y, or Z. And we're like, you're trying to do what? And we didn't even know that was even possible. Um, so it, it's really cool to hear how, like even that witness part. Just, oh, Hey buddy. My son just hopped in. Say hi, bud. How you doing? That's a sweet it's cape. Guy. It's that guy. We're just doing a podcast. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to remember where I was. Um, oh, but we're really impressed what people do. But I really appreciate you actually being candid and sharing that as well with us. That's really good. <laughs> Working from home is uh, during a pandemic. There's things that happen like that. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. It's really understandable. Yeah. So. Um, since we're kind of getting to the end of this, I wanted to ask you if you have any questions for Lumalite or questions for me in general about future or just curiosities or anything that we could do to support you um, uh, as an affiliate. Like we're really, we're really proud of the stuff that you're doing. It's really cool. I appreciate that. Um, just some product requests, maybe some, you know, I don't know if, if this is something that's coming up down the road, but it'd be really awesome if there was a, a UV stable version of clear slow or a, and or a version of clear slow that has, you know, maybe just a little bit longer working time, you know, like three minutes would probably make a big deal. <laughs> really? Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I love the product. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. Um, if it was a UV stable or if you hadn't had an additive to, to put in the, into the chemicals that would make it UV, a little more UV stable, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I have, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna keep showing you stuff, I'm sorry. It's quite all right. So I did a test. I took uh, just some extra, I had some extra clear slow from a pour I was doing. And uh, I didn't put, put this in a pressure pot, I just left it in a little square mold. And I, I uh, let it cure, I put it out in my front porch for a month, in the direct sun for a month. I was expecting this thing to be like dark yellow and mm -hmm. it's just got a little bit of a tinge to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks, it looks more yellow on camera than it really is. 
but uh, I was pretty impressed with how uh, how it stood up. And I've got pieces that um, that I poured uh, easily nearly two years ago um, that uh, they have they have uh, no issues. Right. Uh, right. I love the product. But um, you know something that uh, you know I can I could tell um, tell one of my customers you know you you can leave it on your shelf and don't have to worry about the sunlight uh, you know at least for the next you know two years. Um, right. But, Having something right. UV stable on that on that product would be it would be absolutely amazing. I would buy tons of it. That's good to know. I mean, it is something that we have considered, and it's also uh, it is a trick because um, what we're trying to do is also sell something that is um, actually consumer friendly. Uh, there are some, as you know, the chemicals. The yeah. only way to make something completely UV stable is to add certain chemicals that are extremely dangerous uh, to the uh-huh. average consumer, like mercury, for instance. And that's, I can be honest about that. Like, we're not yeah. going to sell anything that has mercury in it. Um, uh, liability. <laughs> yes. So, but there, that's the re- that is part of the process. And we are learning and we have our own chemists and the whole bit. So it's something that we're constantly trying to innovate uh, in regards to the product offerings in general. Um, we do have a couple of new products that are coming out in 2021 that we're pretty excited about. It's not a UV stable, uh, clear slow, but, uh, or more stable is a better word for that. It is something that we have got a lot of feedback on, uh, and something that we know is an, uh, um, a need that's out there because people are doing more of what you're doing and not just like Star Wars stuff. I'm talking like across the board, whether it's encapsulations of any kind or, knife handles or blanks or pens it doesn't matter like it'd be really beneficial if we can have something that's even just a can last a little bit longer than what currently is there so um, it's great feedback it's definitely something that i will take to our product developer (laughs) awesome cool awesome so any other questions or any other things that i could do to help you at this stage in the game um no i i just i'd like to just give you guys a little shout out um you know i uh I can be one persistent, annoying person. Um, and you guys have been nothing short of amazing. Uh, this journey where um, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, in the path of where I was in my growth and uh, the opportunity came up to become an affiliate with you guys. And um, the support from you guys has been amazing. Uh, the, the communication and everything, um, all the personalities you have working there. Uh, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of personalities. And, and Taylor, Janelle. Uh, Carol, I love Carol. Um, you know, you guys have been nothing short of awesome. Um, the support has just been tremendous, and I, I couldn't imagine working with any other manufacturer. So, you know, thank you so much to, to everything you guys have done for me and been there for me and supported me. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Hey, man, you're going to get me emotional now. Like, we're just <laughs> trying to wrap up a podcast here, and I got goosebumps, and I'm getting like, you feel the, you know, the back of the eyes starting to tingle a little bit. Um, <laughs> So I appreciate that. And I definitely will make sure that my entire team hears that. Um, we love it. I mean, the reality is like we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't. Um, and we really do like, uh, I mean, supporting people like yourself who are making such incredible stuff um, and just people in general. We like people just in general, too. So, uh, but yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you saying that. Um, uh, for those of you that are watching this podcast or those of you who are listening, you can definitely support Jared by using his affiliate link. So if you go to any of his social channels, click on his affiliate link and then use his code, which is Jared 10 at your checkout and you'll get a discount. Um, when works, you, works, you, 10. works, works 10. 10. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. Uh, works 10. Thanks for correcting me. So yeah, I can't, I, I try to remember all the codes in my head. That's kind of a stupid thing. I should have it written down right next to me. So I don't forget works 10 is so, and just like the board behind you, right? Yeah. That's it. Yep. Works 10. Sweet. Perfect. All right. Well, I really appreciate you again. uh, And thanks for being on this podcast. And hopefully we get to talk to each other again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Of course.